Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6. The Thor Freya construction project has been underway since March. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Emily Bloom. For drivers, this construction project is a headache to get around and local businesses say it's killing them as they try to adapt to reach their customers. Bronte Sirotsky gives us an updated timeline on the project's completion and how local businesses are holding up. Budslinger's Coffee is located right here near Freya and Sprague. They tell me they rely on people driving by this area for business. This construction project has them struggling to stay alive. So actually we were not sure whether or not we were going to be able to survive the construction. The drive through coffee shop says they've had to make changes like cutting back on hours and shifts just to operate. We've cut back on our shifts um, and we we still are just not we we're just not generating the revenue to put those shifts back in place yet. So um, we are hoping that once the construction is over that things will pick, pick back up but actually we don't know. It hasn't just been the construction affecting the small coffee stand. Inflation plays a factor too. Something Greco says makes things difficult when losing so much money as it is. Probably our revenues are down, um, you know, 50% or more. Change is on the horizon though. The city says the construction project is coming to an end. So we're nearing the end. Um, I know it's been really challenging for that, um, that travel pattern for people. Davis says it's taken a while due to certain roadblocks messing with their timeline. The first half of the project took a little bit longer because we had an, a really wet spring. Uh, and so we weren't able to lay the concrete maybe as quickly as we would have liked. Um, and also that early part of the, of the project was um, really heavy with infrastructure underneath. This ongoing construction project is finally nearing its end. I'm told construction should wrap up in the next 30 to 45 days, but the owner of Mudslingers tells me that's right when their slow period for business starts. Reporting in Spokane, Bronte Sorotsky, 4 News Now. Meanwhile, you'll want to get ready for some possible delays on the I-90 heading eastbound starting tonight. Washington State Department of Transportation will close the two left lanes eastbound on the I-90 between the 195 interchange and Hamilton Street. Crews will be doing maintenance work from 7 to 5.30 p.m. starting today through Wednesday. Washington DOT says to plan for additional travel time and to slow down in that area. And more closures on the west side of the state. US 2 is closed again in the Skycomish area as crews continue to work on the Bolt Creek fire. Closures are between milepost 49 and 50. Be prepared for heavy traffic westbound. A local sign detour through Skycomish will be posted. And the fire was first reported at the beginning of last month. And a trooper shot in Walla Walla a few weeks ago has returned home to continue his recovery. Trooper Dean Atkinson Jr. was shot in the face and hand and then rammed by a car. Atkinson was able to drive himself to a nearby hospital before he was airlifted to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle for treatment. His road to recovery will now continue with his family, friends and colleagues at his side. And meteorologist Matt Gray joins us in the studio with everything you need to know for the days ahead. Yeah, everything you need to know about some beautiful weather here in the inland northwest and something you ain't going to have to complain about uh, too much as the days go by. It has uh, been another warm day by October standards. Lots of sunshine as well. We're in the 70s still in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. You head down the Columbia River and get lower in elevation and we're sitting in the 80s still in or at least we were just a second ago. We're down into the upper 70s places like Moses Lake, Grand Coulee, Omax still in the 80s looking pretty nice on the Palouse as well and around Pullman. Now over the last 24 hours we have uh, really hadn't seen that much of a change in temperature so our temperature range pretty similar to where we were yesterday after some very quick warming trends for the end of the week and this is a range we're going to be sticking to for for a little while. Temperatures tonight getting down into the upper 40s, but just barely in the metro region. That's another trend we're going to be seeing for a little bit as well. Now, one other thing that we are keeping an eye on, some smoke in the Cascades for some of those fires that I only just told you about. We'll update you on air quality coming up. Thanks, Matt. 
Well, a major difference in side-by-side -side comparison. These are aerial images of Florida in the wake of Hurricane Ian. The urgent rescue work continues in Florida and the Carolinas. The storm is one of the most powerful ever to make landfall in the country. Hurricane Ian's death toll reached 76 this morning. ABC's Rob Marciano is on the Gulf Coast in Naples with the latest. This morning, the desperate search in Florida for survivors. Fire and rescue teams from across the state combing the hardest hit barrier islands. And days after landfall, rising rivers continue to flood areas inland. Citizens volunteering with personal boats to help make rescues. We decided to go in because the water level level has been going up. We linked up with Jeremy Horst and Brian Holdway to patrol the flooded streets of Northport. Nearly half of the city's neighborhoods have water. On return, we came up on three women being rescued. Never seen anything like this. Like, it was the most horrific sound. Oh, here we go. It was the, the worst sound that I've ever heard. This video showing emergency workers and those they've rescued across Florida safely landing to South Fort Myers, where the high school has been turned into a shelter. They've done a lot of water rescues here in Hardy, uh, big time. And as the rescue numbers mount, so too does the death toll, one of the strongest and costliest storms to ever hit the U.S. The latest death toll nationwide, 76 people confirmed dead, a number that keeps climbing. Back in Florida, more than 700,000 customers still without power. Duke Energy hoping to restore service to 90% of its customers by tonight. Gasoline is hard to come by here in the hurricane zone. Look at the length of this line. It goes down about a half a mile, people waiting over two hours. And in Fort Myers, long snaking lines of cars waiting for other essentials like food and water. And Spokane County deputies arrested a man who they say shot at someone involved in a disagreement over a parking spot. It happened in this parking lot of a Spokane Valley apartment complex. Deputies found three rifle casings at the scene. The victim told deputies he came home to find a bunch of items in his parking spot. He moved the stuff over and parked. And that's when he says the suspect yelled at him and brought out a rifle and began shooting towards him. No one was injured and the victim did not press charges. And you can head over to our website, kxly.com, to read more about what exactly happened. And two people are now facing charges after police in Sandpoint say they seized what they believed is fentanyl, heroin, and other dangerous drugs this week in a series of search warrants. Police say the raid was in response to a couple of fentanyl overdoses in North Idaho involving a teen who did recover and a 21-year-old who died. This is a look at some of what police officers took off the streets. You're looking at what are known as blues, sometimes referred to as skittles. Both are suspected of being forms of fentanyl. The pills commonly have the letter M stamped onto them on the side and the number 30 on the other side. Daryl David of Bonners Ferry and Rachel Straley of Spokane were both arrested, cited, and released for meth and drug possession. Sandpoint police say more charges are likely after they get the lab test results back on those pills to confirm that they are indeed fentanyl. Police say they joined DEA agents in tracking that pair down at a motel and searching a separate home this week to find that suspected fentanyl, as well as heroin, meth, and other drug paraphernalia. And coming up on 4 News Now, a new change to how you can pay for your bus ticket. We'll show you how it all works coming up. And millions of Americans rely on food stamps to feed their families, and now there's even more relief in sight. Well, some warm and bone dry conditions for the next several days in the inland northwest. We'll also be watching uh, smoke and haze in some parts of our region. We'll show you where we may have some air quality issues and how long this streak of warm weather is expected to last in your first alert forecast. Four News Now on your time with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Four News Now is brought to you by Washington State Employees Credit Union. Your heart is the beat of life. If you have heart failure, entrust your heart to Entresto, a medicine specifically made for heart failure. Entresto is the number one heart failure brand prescribed by cardiologists. It was proven superior to helping people stay alive and out of the hospital. Heart failure can change the structure of your heart so it may not work as well. Entresto helps improve your heart's ability to pump blood to the body. And just imagine where a healthier heart could take you. 
Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or Aliskirin, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto for heart failure. And trust your heart to Entresto. For News Now welcomes Kirsten O'Connor. You expect more from local news. Important information that makes a difference to you. Kirsten O'Connor delivers. And that's what we mean when we say, expect more. Get to know Kirsten. Weeknights on For News Now. New Salon Pass Lidocaine Flex, a super thin, flexible patch with maximum OTC strength lidocaine that contours to the body to relieve pain right where it hurts. And did we mention it really, really sticks? Salon Pass, it's good medicine. It's a me too. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. A tranquil lake, a serene sky, an emerald forest, a secret hideout. Thanks for being there just when I need you most. Always Toyota SUVs. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Visit your local Toyota dealer to learn more. Reserve yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. It's time for 4 News Now, Coats for Kids. Just drop off new or gently used coats at any of our sponsored locations. We'll bring them to Allsco for professional cleaning, then get them out to local children in need. Donate to Coats for Kids through October 31st. Hi everyone, here at Albertsons and Safeway, we are collecting coats for kids again. Please bring by your new or gently used jackets and get a free flu shot at any of our Eastern Washington and North Idaho stores. Thank you. Brand new for News Now First Alert Weather app. Download or update it today. Food stamp benefits will go up by more than 12% because of inflation. That's about an additional $104 for a family of four each month. Nearly 41 million Americans count on food stamps to help buy groceries every month. The increase doesn't completely make up for the rising cost of food, though. That's because grocery prices jumped by more than 13% in August. And you are now able to use your phone to pay for a bus ticket, and that's all because of the new connected fare system. Here's how it works. You create an account on the STA Connect app. There, you will have access to eConnect cards that you can load up with money using a credit or a debit card. STA is also expanding its reduced and zero fare options. Anyone 60 or older or people with disabilities get a 50% discount. And we've got meteorologist Matt Gray in studio with everything you need to know in the work week ahead. And it's sounding like warm conditions, Matt. Yes, definitely going to be warm by October standards. And that is even with our, suns, our sunrises getting later and our sunsets getting earlier. In fact, the sun will be down before 630, so before we are off the air now that we're in the month of October. Still fairly warm out there, 70s, pretty comfortable as... We kind of round out the daylight hours in over the next several minutes. Temperatures tonight going to be fairly mild as well. Normally we see a lot more low 40s on the board than this, but we are in quite a warm pattern. And so it is upper 40s for a low for maybe an hour or two in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. St. Mary's down to the low 40s, 50s in the Silver Valley, 40 for Colville tonight, 50s in Omak, Moses Lake, and the LC Valley. Now our average high for Monday is about 66 degrees. We are going way, way above that. In fact, we'll be at 66. Well, right about 11 o'clock or so upper 60s for lunchtime upper 70s in a few spots just like we saw in downtown Spokane today we'll creep up to right at 80 degrees before we are done with the day lots of sunshine it's going to be another beautiful day around the inland northwest our highs elsewhere 83 for places like Omac 84 in Grand Coulee, 80s as well for places like Moses Lake and Ritzville. So further west you go, lower in elevation, we're going to continue to see some of these hotter temperatures. But still, plenty of upper 70s even in places like Bonners Ferry, St. Mary's, and Kellogg. And we'll be in the upper 70s as well on the Palouse. And this is generally going to be the temperature range we're going to just hang out in for the next several days. Might pop up briefly to 80 degrees on Tuesday and then a little bit of partly cloudy conditions that'll drop the temperatures just a tad. But overall, we're just going to stay in that 10, 12 degrees above normal range and 
This high pressure that's causing all this, it's not going anywhere. In fact, a big storm is going to come south down through the North Pacific and is actually going to end up strengthening the high pressure that's sitting over the western U.S. And so we are going to be in for a long, long stretch of warm, but otherwise fairly nice weather. Of course, the one issue here is that because it's warm, well, the wildfires in the Cascades in particular continue to smolder, and that's why there's bad air quality, unhealthy air quality in places like Wenatchee. Those areas around the Cascades are going to have to continue to watch air quality with smoke from those fires, eventually tracking north towards the Methow Valley as we get to Tuesday morning here in this animation. So even though things are good around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene with air quality for now, it's something we're going to have to keep an eye on in the days ahead just because it is so warm and so dry. Otherwise, might be a good opportunity if you missed out on uh, doing some fun activities this summer. I think you got another opportunity the next 10 days. Thanks, Matt. Well, over the next few weeks, the Inland Northwest will be filled with beautiful fall colors, hopefully. Tonight, we are heading east to give you a preview of what you can expect to see when the leaves begin to change. Let's go for a ride on the Air 4 drone over Coeur d'Alene. specifically color is what motivates me color is what brings me life and joy watching all of the colors change especially around Coeur d'Alene and around the lake um, is just amazing and here you get like the bright orange and yellows and then you'll see that reflected in the lake so we just have so many amazing scenes around here that get you excited for fall my favorite spot is the Centennial Trail leading out to Higgins Point around the lake. You get those big leafy trees and right now they're bright yellow and bright orange. I am a painter and my paintings are all about celebrating the Pacific Northwest. So I love the Pacific Northwest, born and raised. It brings me so much joy to be able to try to capture some of that on canvas. So I paint a lot of local scenes. As an artist, I'm just very inspired by color and I'm inspired by the beauty around us, the mountains, the trees, the rivers and lakes. So that's what most of my paintings focus on. My students here at the Croc Center, I always ask them, what's your favorite thing about fall? And all of them said the changing of the leaves and jumping in the leaves and yeah, it's kind of bringing joy to everybody. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I love Coeur d'Alene. I love the whole Pacific Northwest. We're so blessed here. And coming up in sports, the Seattle Seahawks were looking to get back in the win column this afternoon, but they were in for a wild game over in Detroit. Alex Crescenti has the highlights coming up next. Download the 4 News Now app today. Hi, I'm Maggie Yates and I'm running for Spokane County Commissioner because we need fresh leadership and real collaboration to create a brighter future for all. Together, we will invest in quality, affordable childcare, hold developers accountable for the damage they leave behind for taxpayers, and tackle the burden of rising property taxes on our seniors and families living on fixed incomes. Join us. Together, we will build a safe and vibrant Spokane County. Inland Imaging and Community Cancer Fund are teaming up to beat cancer. Low-dose screening CT exams may reduce lung cancer deaths by more than 20% by finding early-stage cancers other methods miss. If you're over 50, a longtime smoker, or have other risk factors, lung cancer screening can provide potentially life-saving answers. Ask your doctor or call 363-7799. Inland Imaging, answers you can trust and care you can count on. Our enterprise solutions would cut your monthly operational costs in half. Taylor, it would pay for itself in six months. So, what do you think? One more time. I'll go one more time. Your employees work hard for you. Give them a health plan that works harder for them. From Primera Blue Cross, with more options to fit your business needs and budget. Because your employees depend on it. Find your plan at business.primera.com. The first ever Mazda CX-50. Purpose built for the outdoors. With our most advanced driving technology for responsive, consistent performance on road and off that entices you to go further more often. 
the first ever Mazda CX-50 was built for the Pacific Northwest. Come take a test drive and reserve yours today at Foothills Mazda. Or shop now at SpokaneMazda.com. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. But one day, this farmer will use augmented reality to help ensure the best yield. Urban planners will model traffic solutions to help decrease commute times. Exploring a spacecraft in a museum is one thing. But one day, the metaverse will help students learn about the rings of Saturn. The metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. For those of you waking up early this morning to watch the Seahawks game, they you had probably no idea what kind of game you were in for, and that includes those looking to take the under. And Seattle entered Sunday headed completely in the wrong directions, losers of two straight games, and have yet to look clean this far in the season. But a trip to Detroit presented an opportunity to get back into that win column. Well, let's get to it. Opening drive of the game, Seahawks inside the red zone, and Geno Smith is going to connect with Will Disley for the touchdown. That's his third score on the season, and exactly the kind a start you need if you're Seattle. Lions answer though with a touchdown of their own. That's not going to be a problem for Gino though. He's going to take it in himself. Seattle extends their lead, but this was just the beginning of a crazy, crazy game. Fast forward to the midway point of the third quarter. Seattle with a 16 point lead. Jamal Williams is going to find an opening stiff arm a man down, and he's off for the touchdown to help put Detroit within eight. They would force Seattle into a long third down play. Stack eight in the box, and Rashad Penny's going to get past that first line, and no one's stopping him. Then again, no one was stopping anyone today. In the fourth quarter, a bit of a scary moment here for the Seahawks, as DK Metcalf is going to be carted off the field. Not to worry, though, it was just to the bathroom. And when you got to go, you got to go. Later in the fourth, Lions within three again, and it's going to be Penny again breaking a tackle and speeding past everyone for his second touchdown on the day. He would finish with 151 yards as fantasy football players everywhere rejoicing if you picked him up. If you thought this game was over, though, you're sadly mistaken. Just over a minute left. Jared Goff connects with Justin Jackson for the touchdown to make it a one-score game, so they need to get the onside kick to give them a shot. But it doesn't even travel 10 yards here, and Seattle ends up with it anyway at the bottom of the scrum. And they're able to hang on and get back to 500 on the season. And in the previous three games, Seattle combined to score just 46 points. And in just 60 minutes today, they were able to top that mark, getting to 48 in a wild back and forth affair. Uh, we were executing. We were knocking out third downs. We were we wound up running the football really well today for the really for the first time. It really felt like we had we had it rolling. Um, Gino played spectacular football, spectacular football. On the other side of the ball, we didn't, we didn't do well. We gave up a 10 or 11 uh, explosive plays. And uh, on a day when the offense had 14, we, we, hit, we give up like 10 or something like that. And, and um, there's just too many, too many chunk yards. I mean, the crazy 80-yard play and, and a couple others that they had. We just have to get those out of our football. Seattle will hit the road again next week as they travel down to the Big Easy for a matchup with the Saints. Since 2018, the team has only lost one game when playing at that 10 a.m. time slot. In other action around the NFL, Cardinals taking on the Panthers in a battle of struggling teams. And in the second corner, former Washington State Cougar Frankie Luva is going to jump in front of the Kyler Murray pass and take it to the house for the pick six to give Carolina the lead. Luva having himself a season already. Then at the end of the uh, at the end of the quarter, the Panthers quarterback J uh, Baker Mayfield is going to get picked off here when his pass is off the mark, and that's going to be Jalen Thompson the four, another Coug for his fifth career interception. And it's a, just another big weekend for Washington State, but in this matchup, it's the Cardinals getting the win. And we've already known for a couple of days now that the Seattle Mariners are headed to the postseason, but they still have something to play for. An outside shot of hosting a wild card series. Well, things did not get w off to a good start here today. Robbie Ray in the series finale against the Athletics in the sixth. He gives up the two-run home run to Nick Allen to make it a 6-0 Oakland lead. Ray would go five and two-thirds innings, giving up five runs on eight hits and had three homers against him. Then in the ninth, Shea Langoliers just helps open it up even more with a three-run shot across the left field line. That makes it a 10-0 ball game as Seattle's offense just nowhere to be found once again. And Seattle still has the series win against the A's, but obviously a disappointing result considering they have their eye set on more. You know, we're, we're trying to 
you know, fight our way and, and it would be awesome to, to host a playoff game here. But, you know, we need some help along the way. And, you know, we're at the point where you almost got to win out, and we certainly do now. But uh, I say all that. Our team's played really good baseball. Just today we didn't really get it going offensively much at all. And, uh, you know, the, when the pitches mounted up on Robbie early there, I knew it was going to be a little bit tougher for him, you know, as the game went on. Seattle will now start their final regular season series of the season as they welcome in the Detroit Tigers for the final four games before the playoffs. Four News Now, we'll start right, oh, be right back. Stream Four News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. Save your green! Thanks to Joe Biden, food, fuel, Everything costs too much. His energy policies and massive spending spree are driving skyrocketing prices, fueling the worst inflation in decades. Two years ago, we were a self-sufficient, energy-independent, energy-exporting nation. Today, our energy production has been crippled. I'm Mike Crapo. I approve this message. Let's stop the spending free-for-all, let loose American energy, and fix inflation. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. But one day, this lecture hall will be made of code. And though they're virtual students, what they'll learn together is real. A surgeon will be able to practice as many times as needed in the metaverse before laying her hands on a real patient. Being able to explore a spacecraft is one thing, but the metaverse will let us go farther than any rocket can take us. In the future, students will be able to take a field trip to ancient Rome. And young artists can learn from a masterpiece. Farmers will one day use augmented reality to help ensure the best yields. And urban planners will be able to model traffic solutions to help decrease commute times. So while the metaverse may be virtual, the impact will be real. Your home is not in a tent somewhere by a river. It is not an encampment on the side of the road. It is not behind a dumpster. I know because I've been there. You are worth so much more than where you are at right now. Your home is with safe people. You can be known and loved. My husband has diabetes. Even with health insurance, we're having a hard time affording our medications. Thankfully, we have Patty Murray fighting for us in the U.S. Senate. She kept at it till Congress finally lowered the cost of prescription drugs. And capped insulin for seniors at $35 a month. Now we'll save thousands every year. We know when Patty is back in the other Washington. She is working for us. I'm Patty Murray, and I approve this message. Well, we all know summer kind of showed up late this year, and it, uh, it looks like fall is going to show up late as well when you consider the temperatures we're seeing for really the first half of October. So it's going to be interesting to see how things unfold. In the meantime, I don't think anybody's going to be complaining about that forecast. Beautiful conditions. Thanks, Matt. Well, we will see you back here tonight at 11. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now.